Right? Here, right? <laughs> was <it> from my <laughs> We have Dr. Ellie Paris Miranda, CEO and founder of Ellie Paris. She also takes pictures along the way, by the way. She was around <laughs> taking pictures of us earlier. This young Cape Verdean entrepreneur and philanthropist from this is see, I needed to practice with. Thank you. Founded Ellie Paris an intellectual clothing line company that supports underprivileged children, groups, and organizations that believe in contributing towards social causes around the world. Welcome, Ellie. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Well, wow, after Donald, what, what I have to say? Not much. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, we can see that the Brock is definitely uh, an inclusive city because I'm between the uh, two gentlemen, so I run across for Brockton to include uh, women in, in, on the table. <laughs> well, uh, for me, it was a little by accident, I like to call it that way. Um, I moved to the US uh, um, uh, about seven years ago without any English uh, skills like many of you in this room uh, probably. Um, I was uh, uh, awarded a full um, time, uh, uh, full scholarship to do my PhD while I was also uh, teaching at the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth. There I was also uh, one of the advisors for the Cape Verdean Student Association and one of the uh, main uh, um, uh, things we, we, we used to do back then is taking students to Cape Verde to work with uh, um, underprivileged uh, kids and uh, um, non-profit organizations. So in one of those trips um, where I was um, de facto responsible, I decided to bring these uh, kids more than donations, food, clothes. So I thought to bring them a positive message. Uh, people know me for being someone very positive, very kind. So I made my first t-shirt with this message that this didn't make much sense at the time in English. Let's say, I have the Cape Verdean dream attitude. So the next thing I know, my students posted on social media. And uh, by the time I got to Kvert, my Facebook uh, uh, message was full of people asking for that t-shirt, and everyone was following me. It was just crazy. So uh, when we came back, I was somehow uh, forced to create a clothing line with positive message uh, and beautiful uh, design as well. So slowly, shortly, I opened uh, my store, and uh, we not only sell t-shirts now, now, but we also sell uh, dresses and wedding dresses. And uh, never mind, I was doing this while I was uh, doing my PhD, and then uh, my MBA on the side. So it was uh, pretty challenging, I confess. But I really had the support that I need. Um, I had my husband. I have my husband, thank God, <laughs> a great man uh, who owns a business in Brockton, who has more experience than me, uh, and it was very necessary at the time to guide me through uh, my journey. And uh, since then, I'm, I'm very grateful because uh, I didn't plan it, and uh, today when I go out, everyone knows me as, oh, this is Ellie Paris, that's the, the clothing uh, uh, lady, and she's also the teacher of my brother, my cousin, like, she's, uh, she's doing it all. So it's just like, a, a incredible, like, I feel very, very lucky, and uh, um, I am so ready now that uh, I finish with school, so I can take the, the, uh, the store to um, another level. I'm very, very excited about this. Thank you. Ellie, um, you, along with Donald so far, have mentioned family members and oh. friends and support, and I think those of you who are, we'll get to, we'll, we'll get to you, um, um, Jason, but, you know, for family members who are here, it's not easy, um, but it's also an, a critical part of having that support family and friends, so thank you again. So, um, finally, we get to have uh, Jason Gonzalez of Luanda Restaurant. I love Luanda Restaurant, and, and I drive by and I salivate. Um, I do. Um, Luanda Restaurant and Lounge is a family, actually, can I do one thing? Can I back up? Your address, your where you're located. Oh, 278 Main Street. 
270 Main Street. I wanted to make sure we plug those addresses in, so, so sorry. Thank you. Because we're also going to be plugging, I know why, I, you know, where the Wanda restaurant is, because I just do. But, um, so it's a family restaurant, um, family-owned business that has been serving guests in Brockton community for more than 15 years. It's been 15. Um, I remember the day it opened. Um, their menu incorporates traditional Cape Verdean, Angolian, and Portuguese dishes to create a truly unique dining experience. Please welcome, from, from Luanda Restaurant, Jason Gonzalez. All set? Can you hear me? All right, wonderful, wonderful. Um, thank you, Donald. Thank you, Ali. Um, those are excellent, excellent um, speeches that y'all just gave. It will be a little bit difficult to follow. But um, I'm going to make it three for three on family. So to be honest, I shouldn't even be the person that should be here on stage. Um, for those of you who are locals in the Brockton community, for those of you who have frequented Luanda, and if you're Cape Verdean, most likely you've definitely heard of it. If you haven't visited, you've definitely heard of it one way or another. The woman who should really be here speaking about it is my mother, the woman who has the phone right here, because she is the heart of the family. She truly deserves a standing ovation for what she's done over the past 15 years. So I'll give her one. I want to actually start off, um, the story of the business is the story of our family. Um, and we all had a different role to play in the creation, the development, and now the future of what the business is. So if you'll allow me the time, I'll tell, if you'll allow me the time, I'll tell that story. Um, so my family and I, um, we immigrated from Angola in 1996. Um, my mother, she's full Cape Verdean. Um, my father, he's Angolan. Uh, they met in Luanda. Luanda's the capital of Angola. And that's where they had myself, my sisters, and eventually we all came to the United States. Now, the story of an immigrant, I'm pretty sure it's familiar to many in this room. Um, it's difficult. You know, you work very hard. You come into a new culture. You don't speak the language. Um, the one saving grace is when you have family, it usually makes it somewhat easier. They can soften that flow, they can make that um, cultural disparity a little bit smaller. So that's essentially what happened for my mother and father. They came, they decided to work, they you know, saw the opportunity in this country, and eventually, after a couple of years getting situated, buying a home, they decided to open up a restaurant. Horrible idea. <laughs> Absolutely horrible idea. <laughs> But it worked out. Um, my mother left her job at the time and she began running the business full time. And she had no restaurant experience. Now, she cooks, she makes amazing food. And I'm not saying that just because she's my mother, literally the inspiration for the restaurant was whenever she would cook, it was so good that people would tell her to open up a restaurant. So that was the main driving force. And um, they didn't have a lot of knowledge about Brockton. We lived in Dorchester at the time. But they knew that there was a large community here, and specifically a, a Cape Verde community and an Angolan community. And so they figured, you know, if it's gonna work anywhere, it's gonna work here. So um, they started shopping around for restaurants, and you know, this was back before Google. Um, I think we were still on 56K dial-up internet. So I think they found the ad for the restaurant in um, a newspaper, of all things, I know it sounds crazy. But um, so they found the ad for the restaurant in the newspaper, they drove over, they negotiated with the owner, he was selling it, so they bought it. And um, they started, they started off, um, my mother running it, and like I said, it was, it was a family business, so everybody was involved in different ways. Um, I had older cousins who were the first waiters and waitresses, and then bartenders and bussers, um, myself, I was very young at the time. I was 12, so you know they couldn't really legally work me. They got me do some things, but they couldn't legally put me to work. Um, I remember designing the very first logo we had, but you know a 12-year-old didn't have much graphic design experience. So everybody thought we were a Chinese food place. <laughs> um, and over the years, things developed. But similarly to what Donald echoed, um, things did get difficult. 
things are very, very difficult because, um, as most people know, restaurants are a luxury. And in a community such as Brockton, a community that, you know, was devastated economically after, you know, the loss of manufacturing jobs, and I'm pretty sure everyone's familiar with the history of the city, um, not that many people had disposable income for restaurants. And on top of that, the financial crisis hit. So we took, you know, very heavy blows during that time. Tremendous, tremendous sacrifices had to be made on a personal end from um, my mother, my father, our family as a whole, and it really shaped me as a person who I am. Uh, eventually, as I was getting older, um, I started to occupy different roles in the business. So it went from make a logo to wash the dishes and you know, work the whole weekend and they'll give you a little bit of money to go buy a fitted hat. Um, then it went from dishwasher to busboy, and then from busboy to waiter, and then from waiter to assistant manager, and then assistant manager, so on and so forth. And this was all happening while I was still going to school. So when I finished up high school, I went to college at UMass Amherst. Shout out Minutemen. Um, <laughs> hey, I saw a handball up there. Yes. <laughs> um, Eventually, I graduated civil engineering and I was working in the construction field. Um, eventually, I was recruited to move to actually a different state. I was living in Texas for a while, um, working in my field, specifically in oil and gas. Then I started to travel internationally. I lived um, abroad in Denmark for a while, and then I lived in Scotland. And while all of this was happening, you know, school, studying, work, they never stopped telling me about the business. So they would call me every single day. If there was an issue, if there was a problem, they would they would look to me not necessarily just as their son, but as as kind of a business associate. And it's something that I cherished. If I if I had nothing to do, for example, if I had a, a week off of work for whatever reason, I would work on restaurant things. If I was home by myself, I wouldn't play video games. I would work on restaurant things. That's that was consistently the story of it. And so my you know my parents they, they weren't getting any younger. The business, God bless it, had come out of the downturn and had gotten to a point of stability. And I was starting contemplating to come back home. To come back home, but not just to come back home and find another job, but actually get into the business in full. Dive head first into it. And um, just like Donald said, sometimes you get into it because you see the way something's being done and you think that you can improve upon it. You think that you can provide a service in a better way, in a more efficient way. And that's essentially what was happening. So I was looking at the business, I said, okay, you know, it's making a little bit of revenue, it's stable, but can it last? If something, God forbid, were to happen to my mother, would we close the doors the next day or would we have a continuity plan in place? And the answer was no, we didn't. So that was kind of the things that I was looking towards. Um, we're very famous within the Cape Verde community, but outside of the Cape Verde community, outside of Brockton, how many people know about us? No one. But I knew that we had a good thing because there was never a single person that I brought over that didn't like the food. To this day, even when we interview folks to work with us, I ask them, do you know anything about Luana? They said, all I know is the food's good. I said, that's all you need to know. <laughs> and so knowing that and knowing that legacy that she has, I said, you know what? I think I owe it to myself and I owe it to my family. I'm young. I think there's a lot of people that, you know, it's nothing against them, but I think a lot of people have those visions of going out and being an entrepreneur and getting into business, but there's a lot of risk to it, especially the older you get when you have family, when you have kids, when you have other people depending on you. I didn't have any of those things. I didn't even have student loans at that point. I was like, I'm 24, why not? If I fail, I still got time to pick up back into my career, and to be quite honest, it's the best decision I've ever made. So now we're about... Um, a year and six months in since I returned to the business, and we've been booming in all fronts. So we've remodeled a bunch of different things. We've, you know, fine-tuned a lot of our systems. We've brought on new people. Some people um, are no longer with us, but our staff is stronger. The community as a whole, they've been, they've been giving us accolades left and right, telling us how, you know, the customer service is better. You know, everything's better. Just the experience as a whole, business is picked up, revenue numbers-wise, but. Even though it sounds like, okay, we've made it, that list, that to-do list just actually grew a lot bigger because every single day when we get in there, it's like, oh, well, you know, we could have done this differently or maybe we can, you know, build a new bathroom and we'll be able to service guests over there or 
maybe we should, we should expand this bar counter. Um, just the other day, I was in the um, Metro South Chamber, and we found out about uh, state funding and becoming a licensed vendor so that you can you can provide services, provide goods to, to state institutions or um, to, to businesses that are using state funding for their projects. And I was like, wow, that's, that's a perfect opportunity. Because up till now, we've, we've had to rely on word of mouth. We've had to rely on the community, which God bless them. Without them, we wouldn't be alive. But there's so much more that we can do. So it's the future looks very bright. The future looks very exciting. Um, personally, I love Brockton. And it sounds kind of crazy when I tell my friends that are located in Boston or other areas. I said, you love Brockton? I said, yeah. They were like, if there was only one city in the world that you could ever live in, you would pick Brockton, Massachusetts, I said, without a shadow of a doubt. And they're like, you must be crazy. I'm like, no, you just don't understand because you're not there. And it's not just an optimistic way of feeling. It's also, if, if you look at the numbers, if you look at the data, you know, and just like Donald said, Brockton's an emerging city. It's on the rise. So it's either you're going to come in when it's all said and done, and Brockton's up there on top, and you're like, whoa, what is this? Or you're going to be part of that wave that actually gets puts it there. And I think that, you know, the people in this room, all of us up here on this panel, we are those people that are going to put that sit our city up there in high tide. I stand here as the MC and I am looking and I'm saying, I am not worthy, I am not worthy. <laughs> I live here, I shop here, and I'm looking at each one of you with how you work with your hands, with, with food, and how you work with design and clothing, and how you work with real estate and construction, and you know, this story needs to be told to every single one of our residents, to everyone in this region. And I think in particular to our young people that they know what it's going to take. And I, a little shout out to the Greater Brockton Young Professionals and, 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 and keeping that energy going. So that's not on script. That I want to say because I know we're running a little bit of some time. And um, it was asked to me if there was going to be some time for questions. And I think at this point there isn't. But I know that you are going to be around and at each of your tables. And um, so um, to thank everyone and thanking all of our panelists um, at this time um, first of all so I wanted to thank all of our panelists again. and at this time I'd like to invite our host Fred Fontaine owner of the perfect place to say a few words and draw tonight's door prizes before we continue with our resource export expo Fred Oh, first of all, let me say thank you, Mary. That was, that was a good job. Thank you. <laughs> and um, how many of you been to the perfect place? Raise your hands. Oh, okay, that's perfect. How many of you never have a chance to? That's the first time. Well, what do you think about the place? Awesome. Thank you. Well, uh, you heard the story of those three. Folks here, this is some small business people who really make it. And um, I really enjoy the story of all the three of you guys. And uh, we need more young folks like you to help Brockton. Uh, Brockton need those kind of folks here with the heart, the feeling of loving Brockton. Uh, Brockton is a beautiful place. And it's up to, you, to us, to all of us. Regardless you live somewhere else, working in Brockton, I think we could make it. Because if you get the heart to make it, you will make it. So the only thing I'm going to say, you know, the perfect place is yours. It's not mine. It's for all of you folks. Bring your party here, your wedding anniversary. We get good food here, like Luanda. <laughs> <laughs> we get great people. Uh, we get plenty of parking. It's safe. Because most of the time when folks see Brockton, everybody say, oh my God. No, Brockton is a beautiful place. There's PC in Brockton. And we, we all together, we could bring the best of Brockton. And uh, again, I want to thank you, all of you, for being here tonight. 
and I hope to see more and more of them. Thank you again. We hope that you were inspired, and I know you were. There's no doubt about their stories, and feel empowered, and that's a really good word for today, to pursue the opportunities created through this evening's program. We encourage you to think about starting and growing your business locally, whether it be a restaurant, a gallery, or a gas station. We are here to help you and to expand your network. We look forward to working with you and frequently, frequent, thank you. This is, I've got two words today so far, my <laughs> frequent team, your business soon. Please stick around for the business after hours and challenge yourself. This is a good challenge. Challenge yourself to meet 10 new people. Get their cards, put their phone numbers in your, in your phone. Um, that really is. You never know what each interaction will bring in terms of new business and opportunities. We also have delicious food, cooked up by our sponsor, The Perfect Place, as well as some exciting door prizes and music provided by Rajad Gamer of Entertainment One Stop Shop. You were awesome. This was great. The information on, um, on the resource expo tables will be available until the conclusion of the program at 7.30 p.m. Probably one of the most important things for for any uh, business that needs to grow, and that's capital. So in a room that has um, lenders, I think that uh, a message needs to be sent to those lenders that somebody has to be first, okay? <clears throat> you come here to Brockton, you sponsor these events, you rub elbows, you hold out your hand, you give out a card. When you receive that phone call, you've got to do more than just answer it. When you receive that application, you've got to do more than just review it. If you want to see Brockton take off, if you want to see this economy grow, if you want to water the seeds that many of us are planting, if you really want to have a foothold here and be responsible for the growth of Brockton and putting it on the map and making sure that this emerging city actually emerges and blossoms, then you've got to do more than look at what's black and white on the paper in front of you. Because obviously from everything that you see here, there's more than just the numbers and more than just what you see on the surface. So. As an entrepreneur who probably by now, if I had the capital that I, that I needed to support many of the uh, ventures that, that, I, that I wanted to pursue, I mean, I could be a multimillionaire and I could probably be out doing uh, seed money for smaller businesses and stuff like that. But it seems that sometimes when you go to that lender that they don't see all the, that's actually there, right? Don't let your parameters handicap you. If you really believe in what you're doing, if you really want to be supportive, then you got to put the money out. Put the money out, the ROI is there, you'll get it back and you'll be better for it. Thank you, Don. So, again, all the panelists will be around for, for individual questions. Um, we'd like to thank our sponsors, um, Bridgewater Savings Bank, again, for being the sponsor of the panel, but also of the additional um, um, raffle prize, The Perfect Place, Peppercorn Cafe and Catering, Rockland Trust, BC Tent and Awning, all of our partners and exhibitors tonight, Darren Duarte and Mayor Bill Carpenter, Rich Morgan of Rich Morgan Photography, Rashad Garner of Entertainment One Stop Shop, Brockton Community Access, the Enterprise Newspaper, our Chamber Ambassadors, and all of you for attending. Just a reminder, the Chamber is holding a legislative luncheon on March 20th at Bridgewater State University, featuring House Speaker Robert DeLeo and Brockton Mayor Bill Carpenter. And don't miss out on the taste of the Metro South. It's, it's a different, it's no longer, it's not in May, it's March. This is in April, April 24th, so mark your calendars at the Shaw Center in Brockton. Over 40 restaurants showcasing the multicultural flavors of the region will uh, we'll be serving their specialties. I can't wait, it's one of my favorite time of the year. 
please see Athena Lavoie, Chamber Program Director for Tickets, or to sign up as a restaurant. I, before I do finally conclude, I really want to make sure that the Metro South Chamber staff, the amount of time and volunteers, and Chris from Athena to Kelly and everybody, it's an amazing to, to put this on and to have it. So just a round of applause for the Metro South Chamber staff. And with that, this concludes the business panel portion of the program. Please enjoy the rest of the evening and um, be careful of the weather. Oh, and dessert. So thank you very much.